Today we're going to see if Cactus 1549 could have made it back to LaGuardia. It had 150 passengers and 5 crew aboard, operating just 90 pounds below the absolute maximum takeoff weight. Cactus 1549, runway 04 clear for takeoff. Cactus 1549, contact New York departure 120 decimal 4. Good day. Cactus 1549, continue, climb 15,000. Start factor, start factor, we had 35% on the left engine, the right engine's gone, I'm too busy to deal with it, I'm just going to get the APU, see if I can get that back on, and with it, I am now have my start factor done with, I'm going to see if I can get it back to base, so the first thing that they did was dump the nose to try and get best glide on. dived and got themselves around 210 knots. I'm going to do that so that the uh, flaps auto retract. I assume that's why they dove to get 210 knots on. So far we've recreated absolutely everything by the numbers according to the official report. It is at this moment in the flight that we deviate from what really happened to what we're going to try and pull off in the sim, which is continue a left-hand turn and attempt a landing back where we came from. And there is 210, and indeed the flaps have retracted. I can think of no other reason why they would dive to, lose, to gain all that speed. They lost about 2,000 feet in the dive, I believe. Just to confirm, the right engine is dead and the left engine is operating at 35% N1. off. Two 
500. They've used there. Let's get the bleed on. Flaps two. Gear. Too low. Gear. Standing on the brakes. Idle reverse, the brakes are hot. You bet they're hot. Oh, all right. So there you go. Was it possible? As you can see, barely. It's possible. Would you gamble your life, the life of your crew, the passengers, and untold numbers of people on the ground in New York? Probably not. You'd pick the big wide open runway that's got loads of rescue ships all around just waiting to pick somebody up. I've actually done a big exercise just months before in the Hudson together with the tourist cruise boats there. They did a rescue exercise. And of course the Airbus is designed to withstand landing in water given certain parameters. Yeah, so to finish off with, then I thought I'd include the official NTSB results from the flight simulators and I'll read the highlighted text. Pause if you want to read more. The simulators were programmed to duplicate as closely as possible the conditions of the accident flight, including winds, temperature, altimeter settings, weight and balance. During the simulators, the pilots followed the US Airways dual engine failure checklists. The pilots mostly relied on their experience and were fully briefed on the manoeuvre before they attempted to perform it in the simulator. There were three different types of scenarios flown. We're focusing on the second one here, which is to attempt the landings at LaGuardia or Teterboro after the bird strike. Starting from zero ground speed on the runway 04 as we did pre-programmed to the engine failure shortly before the bird strike, which is exactly as we did it. And as you can see down there, it was only 50 odd percent that made it back to one of the runways. The rest of the time, either the simulator had some kind of fault or there was no fault in the simulator, but the pilots were just unable to make it back to the runway. So as you can see there, if your odds are not much better than a 50-50 coin flip and the pilot says, well, I've got an answer that will work 100% of the time, it just means you're going to get your feet a little bit wet. <laughs> And of course, it was a little chilly, minus six degrees outside, although the water temperature was plus five, but still very cold indeed. Either way, Sully saved the day, and I don't think there's many that can argue with his decision, or indeed the decision of the crew overall to land in the water. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, from me here on Internet Flight Rules, wherever in the world you may be, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Take care, bye-bye.